do that. <laughs> and uh, actually, I was going to say, there's a fucking crazy fact, which might make you, might, might give you an even better idea of what kind of person I was from where I grew up. Tell me. Do you remember me telling you about who the Chicago Rippers are? The Chicago Rippers. Yes, yeah, Chicago Ripper crew. Uh, were those the skinheads? No, 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 no. It what sounds like it though. No, no. The um, Chicago Ripper crew. That was the part of the Satanic Panic in the night. Okay. With the guy. Oh, oh I'll retell it for oh, our listeners. Sure, the CPC. Yeah. Or CRC. God, I yes. can't even spell. Is it, isn't CRC like a department in in a school or something? Probably the. It was them. Career Resource Center, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But the Chicago. Chicago Ripper. Rippers. Okay, so here's the story. I'll try to break it down. Long story short. Long story short. Or just if you say like one sentence, I'll probably be like, "Oh yeah." Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'll I'll re-explain it for the listeners. Forest fires? I, no, no, no. They were um. So there was a construction company in Melrose Park. The reason why I found out about Chicago Rippers is because of that whole satanic panic. Where I grew up in my neighborhood, everybody said, "Don't go in the woods because they're satanists. Don't mm-hmm. do this because they're satanists. Don't don't fucking go around there." And right. I used to. I was like, where do you fucking join? That was me as right. a kid. And just wa- wandering out into the woods. And yeah, yeah. Like, hello, Rippers. Ripper. Satanists? I'm not oh. looking for the AIDS ass virus. No. I'm looking for an application. So, no, anyways, so these guys, the reason why I found it out is because I, I watched an episode on Netflix called The Cult Crimes, and they mentioned a hotel called The Burr Rabbit. Okay. And when I saw that, I was like, holy fuck. That is a mile from where west of my house, mm-hmm. where I grew up in Chicago, and it's still there. They didn't change the sign. They didn't change anything. That was where the first murder happened. So these were four guys. Here's the thing. There's Robert Gecht, who is pretty much a complete fucking sociopath and is just, for some reason, he's completely into tits. That's like his Like breasts? Fetish. Yeah. Like- he fucking loves tits. Okay. That's his biggest preference. He would rather titty fuck you and marry you for it. I mean, Anyways. to each his own. So, um, and then there were three of his workers in the construction company. Two of them were actual, in- like, actually interested in Satanism. So they kind of just were like, "I just want to start raping and murdering women sure. for our, our, you know, for fun." Father down below, you know. Sure. And he was kind of like, "Just all right, we'll do, we'll use that as the motivation," you know. As as far as as far as like an insanity plea, you know, when he just really just wanted to rape the fuck out of women, when these guys were more like, I want to do. Sin-. I mean, it doesn't make it better, sure, but it was more like these guys. He controlled these three other fucking people. Okay. He was like, if you don't come along, you're already this deep, so you got to keep going. So, what they they would do is, for some reason, they would take a piano wire clip off the left breast of every woman keep the tit and then fuck them in the wounds and then every okay. and, and every tit they kept they kept in the attic of robert Getz's house okay and circle jerk around it when oh, there's just nobody to murder tonight it's friday night yeah, yeah exactly and and what um they didn't they didn't find they, they every fucking story i've heard about the chicago rippers they're like we don't know why what's the significance of the left tit what's the left tit i think it's a left-handed path i think that's what it has to do with what is the left-handed path yeah for black and white magic you do evil is from the left hand and good is from the right well you gotta think so so like so like you have the wicca star on the right and then you have the pentagram on the left similar Mm. to that maybe what does gibby think well, you know, you don't buy the hand of fate. I like how his like justification was: "You're in too deep. You're in too deep. You have to come circle jerk with me in my attic." <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, yeah. boss. <laughs> well, well, well. They were using their work van, and um, so they, so th- th- it ended up being around eighteen confirmed victims. They thought there was more, and oh, the reason why I brought it up before on the podcast, and this mm-hmm. is so bad, but. So they yeah they would do that they would jag off to the flesh and then and then they they fucking bury the body somewhere and because they were part of construction you know obviously if you fucking are into murder at all or watch Sopranos you fucking that's that's the easiest place to get rid of a fucking body sure. is cement it down you know mm-hmm. so they um 
a few of the victims got away mm. and the like it just made me laugh my ass off because oh, God. The, the how the, be, because the the occult crime special on netflix mm-hmm. they show this woman uh in the hospital when the co- the cops are questioning her and she's like breaking down crying mm. and it looked like they put a basketball under her shirt on, on only one side so it's just one huge tin, oh. but it's such a fake tin. Yeah. yeah. So it just, it was just a really bad, you know, made for TV reenactment. Yeah. So I love those like dramatizations. Or yeah, yeah. Dramatizations. Usually they're good, but just thinking, yeah, because her, ori- I mean, you need a whole lot of piano wire if her tit is the size of a fucking basketball. For sure. You know. So she like they did mutilate her, but then she was like, I'm out of no, here. She got away, and and uh and they let her go, and. Well, the first mutilation was at that hotel, which mm-hmm. was like a mile f- fucking west of my house. Sure. Anyways, they ended up catching these guys, and you know they found out all this occult shit. Uh, the w- and the weirdest fucking part was that that Robert guy who led this whole crew. Mm-hmm. To this day, he says he's innocent. Hmm. He he's a soci- he had such sociopathic power over the, the other three. That they had him, they had them confess that they did everything. That Robert was the leader, and then they'd be like, "Really? We're glad you gave us this information." And then they bring Robert in the room, and their fucking like pupils widened, and they're mm-hmm. just like, "No, never mind. We did this all. Like mm-hmm. that's how quick." And so he was actually up for parole like two years ago. Okay, I don't remember. I didn't read into what happened, but here's the part that I couldn't fucking thanks to true crime. Mm-hmm. So here's a shout out to True Crime. Way to I'm go, Gibby. I'm sorry, Gibby. I'm sorry, Gibby. I love you. Okay, I'll be honest. It makes me laugh. Perfect. But that I was, was looking, very nice. That was okay, lovely. Really, really. But uh, yeah. Of course, like I didn't know this. So they, that group of people. You know what construction company they work for? Mm-hmm. They worked for the construction company, owned by John Wayne Gacy. Interesting. Isn't that fucking nuts? That's fun. Small world. Yeah. And and what's crazy about that too is that even when John Wayne Gacy was, you know, interrogated and fucking like questioned like throughout the whole process, mm-hmm. he didn't want to be put away. So so <laughs> he, did, he did a lousy job of that. Yeah, well well no, but so you know when you get a fucking lawyer and you're completely caught, mm-hmm. you're gonna go. You're gonna get as desperate as can fucking be. You know, mm-hmm. you'll let the lawyer give you ass AIDS virus. Mm-hmm. So so he his new story was that he had accomplices help him uh-huh. because you know they found th- around thirty bodies, mm-hmm. and they there were so many they couldn't fucking count them because there were so many uh, body parts. Mm-hmm. And so his like new alibi was, well, how the fuck could I do this all by myself? How could I do this? There's no, I had accomplices. There were accomplices in this. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I thought that was, Mm. I thought that was interesting that they, because I, he, a lot of the people who were on that construction. So what I, what I read from courtesy to true crime was that, or heard from uh, that construction company, his motive well, the way the motive looked was, I'm going to hire a shitload of young boys mm-hmm. because they're all looking for jobs straight out of high school. They want to pay off student loans so you can pay them cheaper to do more work. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you get young boys. Well, not really like student loans, but, you know, they're yeah, all yeah. looking to make a buck. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> you know, y- yeah, exactly. But so, so they, so, but, but you, we both know what. We both know what happens when you get young boys around John Gacy. Mm-hmm. And and you know what's fucking even more sick, though, t- that, that I didn't even realize? The way certain words evolve. For example, how we were talking about racists, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, to me, I, I'm still old school. So to me, you're not a Nazi unless you're actively killing other races. To me, a Nazi is 1942 Nazi. This day, I mean, you could be a fucking Nazi for liking a certain cartoon or a certain joke. What I thought about the terminology and linguistics aspect of this story, every time they tell the John Wayne Gacy story that's fucking crazy, which they brought up on True Crime, Mm -hmm. they say these were young men. The crazy thing is, back then, when you were fucking 18, you were sort of like expected to be 
married and off on your own and living on your own and have your own job. Mm-hmm. So when they say young men, a, a young man back then, you got your job when you were 14. Okay. So that would be a man at 14. So you, so they he was like fucking some young like like boys. Sure. And be, because they even said that back then pedophile wasn't even that word didn't even exist back then. I don't know. I thought that was I think it funny. totally existed back then. I, I don't think it was made pedophile. Yet. Yeah. That, come on, pedophilia has been around. Well, it, well, it wasn't used as much. I mean, it'd be like like you know, when I mean I've heard about this even in like when I heard about uh. You know, I, I we talked about like the whole Me Too movement about how there. I know recently, obviously, I've been reading a lot of articles about the whole Vatican covering up all these fucking child molesting priests. That back in the day, you got some weird fucking priest that was just oh he's he just gets naughty with the boys, right? Instead of now you be like, no this fucking creep fucks you in the ass. You get real blunt with it, and that's I I think that's what I mean that they. They just, a lot of those people, they just didn't use that terminology. Well, sure. And then, like, even in ancient Greek times. Yeah. I forget it was. Well, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, but if you said, like, I mean, maybe it's shitting on, like, our, like the new generation about how we're still fucking boys in our minds, you know, you, like, you know, now. So saying this guy fucked young men now would be. So maybe somebody into their thirties, because they're, they're they're still not fully men, you know, <laughs> mentally. Uh, you know, yeah. I, don't know. I, I mean, I I've always gone by the whole age restriction thing, you know. As what far like as, eighteen and up is men? Yeah, yeah. Seventeen and younger is boy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I bet there's a rule. Yeah. Or maybe they just prefer to say young men. You know what I thought was kind of crazy? Tell and me. And I will fucking call this out. I don't give a fuck. All right. I think it's crazy, and 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 that's the other thing that John Wayne Gacy lived. One, two blocks north of me. Okay. And he actually lived 10 feet away from where I lived in that condo. Okay. That's where his house was. Yeah. Well, it's not there anymore, but. No. It, uh, well, yeah, it got demolished. The mm-hmm. property got demolished and they changed the address, but mm-hmm. the, that like location is yeah. still there. The, I think it, they changed it. I think it was like 8013 West something. It and now like it's Buttercup or something like Butterfield or some shit. Butterfield. I think so. Maybe. And then now it's like eighty twenty eight or something, hmm. but um, yeah. Good luck selling that house. What I find weird though, and maybe you and Sandra disagree with me. What do you find weird about the John Wayne Gacy? That growing up, and- that whole fucking story was terrifying. Yeah. One one of the biggest aspects that people won't understand ever because you have to live it. It's literally like living a different race. Is that a, in a world where there wasn't GPS, where there wasn't internet, there's some fucking creep in this neighborhood. You don't know where he is. You just hear story. You know. You know what I mean. The aspect of like, there, like they explain how there wasn't background checks back then because sure. he was fucking and and abducting boys when he lived in. He was from Iowa, mm. so they don't know that how much he did there. Like they don't even know where that property is or if they discovered anything there. Sure. And so what I think is fucked up, though, is that, like, growing up, I'm like, this is the most fucked up shit I ever heard. Because he goes after young boys by being a clown. Did you ever hear about the handcuff trick? No. He he used well, it. it's a handcuff trick. He, he used it to every victim. And there were about 40 guys who testified that they got away from him because of it mm-hmm. on that construction team. He would He would go... He'd be a really like flamboyant clown, clowny, just a really like goofy old man. He'd be like, "Hey, so you want to see one of my tricks? It's Pogo. Mm. Here, look at this. Put these cuffs on me. Check that they're real." And he do. And back then, you know, like the kid cuffs that we have now, mm-hmm. people didn't weren't really aware that those existed back then. Okay. So those were used in every like magic show. Okay. So pe- everybody thought those were real cuffs. Okay. And he just had the clip, so he would go like, "Yeah, look, you put them on." Oh, I got him out, and and he'd be like, "How'd you do that?" And he's like, "See, look, there's this clicker here." Be like, "Now you try to get out," and he's like, "I can't get out, I can't get out." And I'm like, "Well, for those, you have to have the key," and then he'd fucking like knock him out and rape him. Mm. And there was one guy who, yeah, he got away. He he saw like uh, his name is like Jeff Gunzen or something. I don't know. Anyways, the thing that I think is crazy about all of this. Is that growing up, that was fucking terrifying. Sure. 
I feel like now, because of the way social environment is, people could be like, it was because of his homosexual rage, so it's okay. If if he could just come out and, and, and deal with, you know, being gay, he would, it, it would, everything would be okay. I feel like that, could, I mean, I, I don't see somebody like, you know, for example, Kevin Spacey being as persecuted as somebody like, I don't know, Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby, you know. What do you mean? Well, there, well, there's a lot of, well, um, you know, you know, Milo, right? No, but you've told me about Milo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, Milo Yiannopoulos, like, a, he's kind of an attention whore douchebag. Sure. He can be, he has a lot of great points and he's a lot of points that he has his head up his ass AIDS virus ass. And uh, one of the things was that uh, he was trying to explain that pedophilia can be sometimes necessary for boys to understand their sexuality. Meaning that, um, you know, kind of like how, got, how, how like a straight male has like their first sex experience. And if it's and if it's with maybe an older girl, that's like amazing for them. Like that's a huge boost in confidence and ego, and they're the fucking ladies' man from there, right? You know what I mean? Sure. Well, he his argument was that for boys, they need a father figure who will like show them love by easing them into you know coming out and then fucking them. That was his argument. Okay. And it was really, really fucked up because, yeah, he's like super right wing Republican. And that, like, it's just, I don't know. It was, I, I, after that, I stopped listening because I'm like, this guy, sure. He's just trying to get people that riled up, you know? Sure. And it's, I mean, to be honest, I could see that being, I mean, that, that could be, uh, the situation for a lot of maybe gay people, but where they wish their father had raped them. No, where the, where they had uh, wh- where like that's how they came out, and they were okay with it because they, their father raped not them. Fa- no, not father, a father figure, like an an older male who is gay. That's why I don't know if you've ever noticed. I mean, I have a f- I have a few gay friends who are completely picky about. I will only date an older male because that, that it's like a Freud thing where I need a father figure to well, be going out with. Well, I think that's everyone like, yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people have that sort of stipulation. Like, yeah, oh, I can't yeah. go out with younger girls yeah. or, yeah. or anything. I'm just saying that I, 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 I don't, all I was saying is I could feel with the extreme shit that happens these days that somehow <laughs> somebody would make John Wayne Gacy like justified, you know? Sure. And I think there's, probably some validity to it like all that anger yeah yeah inside but that doesn't make it okay oh yeah yeah absolutely bury people in the crawl space i just i just thought it was crazy that you know you grew up around all those plus that's the same you you know i grew up around a lot of goofy fucking people with all the (laughs) satanic panic sure i don't know Don't do that.